are. Oh, welcome to Sandy and Friends. You know, we've been meeting like this almost three years, every weekday morning on Morning Scramble. And we've shared our time with chefs, musicians, athletes, doctors, soldiers, wild animals, and tame artists, politicians, movie stars, even royalty. In short, both amazing creatures and friends and neighbors who are doing extraordinary things. But we at AZTV wanted to create a new show, one that would reflect all the great times and wonderful guests that we've already shared, but also one that would acknowledge the bond that we've created as friends. So we've named the new show Sandy and Friends because I consider all of you who are watching to be my friends. Now, many of you tune in faithfully every day. Thanks, Mom. And literally thousands of you also do, whom I may know personally or only through the magic of television. So, with Sandy and Friends, we're going to share even more of the entertainment, information, fun, and inspiration from the people and communities of Northern Arizona. But here's the big difference, of course, other than we're now meeting at 9 o'clock, is that we know each other. You and I, we know each other. So now we're going to be enjoying the show as friends. We'll be greeting old friends and meeting new ones together in exciting new recurring segments, such as Hold the Phone, What's That You Say? Out and About in Arizona, Secret Lies and Deceptions, and many more. But hey, you know, before we get on with our inaugural show, I want to share with you the most obvious change, our beautiful new set. So, here is a small glimpse into what it took to put a brand new face on the legacy of Morning Scramble. Boy, I wish it had gone that fast. It was four days of real hard labor, but it was worth it. It is wonderful. If you want to see the full version, it's four minutes long. You can go on our Facebook AZTV, uh, and you can watch the whole version. Anyway, just let me say welcome to Sandy and Friends, and thank you for being my friends. Speaking of old friends, I have some old friends here. Well, they're not old, but we've been together for a while. Carla Birkin, nice to have you on. Also, Jeff Stein. Good now, to be here. Yes, nice Great to, to have you guys on the inaugural show because, again, we've spent some good times together. Right. Now, Carla, you're with Lark Productions, and you guys do a lot of things, a lot of drama, but especially Shakespeare. Especially Shakespeare right now. Yes, yeah. and now you've got some Shakespeare kicking off at Arco Santi because you are the uh, president and CEO, I believe, of the foundation, the Cosanti Foundation. It's true, and we're building something at Arco Santi, oh. and one of those things that we're building is a Shakespeare festival. Wow. And when is this going to be? Is, is this all going ongoing? It's or? this weekend, Labor Day weekend, but we have two shows going at the, not at the same time, but in rotation. So we're doing a comedy in the afternoon on Saturday and Sunday this weekend, and a tragedy Friday and Saturday evening. So <laughs> it's a mini festival. It's one weekend only, but um, two you shows. You can feel all the range of emotion. The range of emotion. Yes. And oh my gosh. experience Shakespeare in a really beautiful setting and two different playing areas. Is. So we're oh. performing in the amphitheater for Hamlet and in the ceramics foundry for the comedy in the afternoon. Oh, how so. interesting. And what's the comedy? The comedy is All's Well That Ends Well, which we did earlier in the summer, so we're reviving it and then nice. adding Hamlet to that in a rotation. So teaming up. You guys, uh, you've teamed up before on Shakespeare? Yes, this. indeed. This is not our first time, but it's um, our biggest time so far. But it's an ongoing thing. We hope to have Shakespeare every fall. Good. Well, you know, Arco Santi is a, just a cutting edge of performance uh, of all kinds, whether it's music or whatever, and also the bells. Nobody can forget the bells, but Arco Santi is wonderful that way. So obviously Shakespeare really uh, meshes yes, in with the it mission. it fits right in. It there. kicks off our entire fall season in which there's something happening every weekend at Arco Santi until November. 
Amazing. And Arco Santi is down at Cortis Junction right there. You just like whip off off 17 and right you there. Know, there you are. And it's a wonderful, wonderful facility. And I know Jeff will have you on more, you know, during the year talking about things. But so uh, the Shakespeare, I, I'm, I'm loving that you're doing this because you, you do it around here and there. But uh, you cast a 17 year old as Hamlet. I did. I cast a 17 year old <laughs> as Hamlet. It, uh, Hamlet was never my dream to direct. And suddenly I thought, the thing that's wrong with Hamlet is Hamlet's always cast, it's too, he's too old, always too ah. old. And it reads so differently and so interestingly, if you think, here's this teenager, it's a child in a man's body, and people are misinterpreting Ooh. his motivations Whoa. all over the place. And we have Hamlet with us today. And we today. do have Hamlet with us All right, us and you're also an actor, Jeff, and so I Jeff have. is going to head off and get ready for the scene. We'll just slip yes. into something just more comfortable. Yeah. <laughs> I love this. So, you know, actors, all of you are actors, which is clever, even though you're running companies of, of all sorts and everything. So the time period, real fast on Hamlet. Time period, we're putting it in a kind of nonspecific modern time period because okay. I think this story um, resonates across all ages. Jeez. All right, Hamlet, and we have with us uh, Duncan uh, Burkett as well. Yep. Carry it away. How long will a man lie in the earth ere he rot? If he not be rotten before he die, and we have many a pocky corpse laying about who can barely stand the laying in, then he last eight year, nine year. A tanner, he'll last a good nine year. His hide be so tanned from his trade, he keep the water out for a good long while. <laughs> <laughs> Whose was this? Ah, uh, this. A whore son and madman this was, once poured a flag and a Rhenish on me head. Mm. This very skull was Yorick's skull, sir. The king's jester. This? E'en so. Let me see. Alas, poor Yorick, I knew him. A fellow of infinite jest, of most excellent fancy. He hath borne me on his back a thousand times, and now how abhorred in my imagination it is. My gorge rims at it. Where be your jibes now? your gambles, your songs, your flashes of merriment that were wont to set the table on a roar. Not one now to mock your own grinning, quite chapfallen. Now, get you to my lady's chamber and tell her, let her paint an inch thick. To this favor she must come. Make her laugh at that. Prithee, grave maker, tell me one thing. Yes? Dost thou think Alexander looked o' this fashion in the earth? E'en so, sir. <laughs> and smelt so? Pa! Mm. <laughs> All right. Arco Santi, this weekend, two productions, tragedy and comedy. Get on over there. Information on the screen. Shakespeare at Arco Santi. Thank you, yes. Carla. Thank you. Carla Burkett and Duncan Burkett and also Jeff Stein. Mm. Wonderful. Don't you go away, and you better look alive because I tell you, I've got a bird on here who's a vulture. If you're dead, you're gonna have trouble. We'll be right back. Today's show is brought to you in part by Tim's Auto Group. You can count on us, serving Prescott since 1983. Yes, I am a condor. I know it looked like Victoria's Secret, but it's really a condor. This is the actual span of a real condor in proportion. Okay, but we're not talking about condors exactly. We're going to talk about vultures because it is International Vulture Awareness Day on September 3rd. With us is Mike Demlong, Arizona Game and Fish Department. Good morning. You just happen to have a vulture with you this morning. This is a big week, and so we want to start the week right. And look, he loves my condor thing, you see? He He's does. saying, I am more powerful than a condor. Uh, you certainly looked a little bit better. <laughs> He's beautiful. You know, two Gorgeous. turkey, uh, this is a turkey vulture, right? This is a turkey vulture, right? Well, he fl two of them flew over our house like this weekend, and I swear I have not seen turkey vultures in our neighborhood. We have lots of ravens and all that, but anyway, hello, you're so beautiful. Okay, so tell me, what is 
like a turkey vulture? What does it feed on? Yeah, sure. Well, Arizona actually has three species of vultures. We have the California condor, which is so nicely modeled, and then we have a black <laughs> vulture from kind of southern Arizona. And then have we a have a beautiful picture of it. Oh, it's gorgeous, yeah. yeah. And this is the turkey vulture, and they get that name because their head's red, so it kind of looks like a turkey, right? It does. So it does indeed. They're just beautiful birds. So they're a scavenger. They only eat dead things. Which is why I told the audience, you know, snap up while live here because we, we have someone who's going to be watching out for dead things. It's a good thing the show started a little later so there's nobody eating breakfast. Exactly. Well, now, how did you, how did you get a hold of this? Why does Arizona Game and Fish have this turkey? That's a good question. Mike? So if this bird was releasable, we would have turned it loose. Unfortunately, two young boys took it from the nest, believe it or not, when it was young and then didn't remember where they took it from. So after about two days in the house, they don't smell very good, mom said, it's going. This is not your normal pet bird. Right, and so by the time we were done, it was imprinted, and fortunately it thinks it's human and not a turkey vulture. Oh, he thinks he's human. Oh, yeah. Does he relate to humans pretty well? Is he a pretty good pet as far as that goes? He's not uh, a pet, he's, he's a wild animal, so still, matter of yes. fact, you know, if I try to touch him, he's gonna try to bite me, so. Right. Oh, oh, he, oh, he does. Yes, yeah, so there's well, <laughs> second time I'll show you. <laughs> he goes, food? Yeah. Smells like food? No. <laughs> oh, well, now, is this a skull of a, a turkey right, vulture here? Right, you it up. It's a turkey vulture skull, and it okay. just kind of gives you an up view. So they've got the, obviously, when they find a, a, a dead deer or a calf or something, they don't have a knife and a fork, so they've got this very sharp bill. Oh, as a matter of fact, this. I was doing, keeping them entertained earlier, and you can <laughs> see the sharp oh. cut through the paper. It's like someone took a pocket knife, ah. so he can use that just to rip pieces of meat from the carcass, or if it's small enough, he'll eat it. So he qualifies as a, a bird of prey, or only birds of prey kill the things. They don't. Does he actually kill things, or just no, just dead animals? There's actually some okay. controversy. These guys, believe it or not, are more closely related to storks than raptors. Oh, really? Crazy, so huh? do you deliver babies sometimes <laughs> on your free time, eh, bud? Please stay away from me. <laughs> what, what are you watching? I've got five already. <laughs> That's enough. That's, <laughs> That's enough. That's plenty. <laughs> So, you know, turkey vultures, are they native to Arizona? Are they adapted or, or what? Right. You so know. turkey vultures are one of the most common birds you can probably find in Arizona. You can find them anywhere from Canada, across North America, all the way down to the tip of South America. So they have a wide range. Mm -hmm. Well, they do. And I, I, okay, somebody said the other day, I said, I like all creatures, birds, you know, insects. They go, what about flies? I said, without flies, our world would be stinky and dirty. <laughs> so uh, are turkey vultures or vultures in general pretty much that kind of a, a caretaker as well? They're an important part of the ecosystem. So they are the garbage men if you think about it, of the <laughs> ecosystem. So we would have carcasses piled up a mile deep along the roads, okay, an exaggeration, but they're out there eating dead animals, and so obviously there's some ecological advantage of that. So, you know, there really is, and I have to say, Mike, you know, the things, the roadkill and stuff, I mean, it's so sad when I see little creatures that have, you know, cars have collided with them, whatever, but I swear, in, in our neighborhood anyway, and, and we obviously do have turkey vultures and ravens and stuff, usually by the time I come back in the afternoon, they're gone. <laughs> You know, and I don't think it's the city picking them up. I, I think it's it's our, our scavengers who are saying, oh, good, breakfast, sure. you know, which is a great gift to all of us. Hey, what is this? You have a big wing here. I brought a, t a turkey vulture wing, and so you saw the condor. You had the condor's wings on, which you modeled so nicely. <laughs> and that's about gigantic. nine and a half. They're huge. <laughs> condor wings are about nine. Condors have about a nine and a half foot wingspan. Hey, yes. that's larger than Michael Phelps, right? <laughs> yes. He's just, what, like seven yeah. or something? So maybe he'll display. He's got about a five, five and a half foot wingspan. And when he's up soaring, it looks like a glider. Big, long, skinny wings, long tail, and just soars those thermals all day long. So. Absolutely beautiful. So why an International Vulture Awareness Day? Well, because vultures worldwide are having a, a little bit, of to a little hard time uh, making it. Uh, a lot of them are being poisoned accidentally in Central Asia and Europe and Africa. Um, by feeding on carcasses that have been given um, certain drugs for the for the cattle, so and then they get a little bit of lead poisoning. That's another cause for decline. So turkey from vulture shots and the yeah, hunters, from bullets lead, and fragments. Bullets. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, so th they're in a decline now. The turkey vultures are doing pretty good. Obviously, mm -hmm. the California condors are endangered and. Arizona Game and Fish is one of many agencies helping to put them back in the wild. So Now, are condors, are those uh, also scavengers, or are those b birds of prey more? No, uh, condors are scavengers too. Remember, they they're are vultures. Scavengers. They are a vulture are. family. Yeah, oh, gotcha. and they re okay. rely more on sight than smell. Like turkey vultures are notorious for being, look at those big nostrils. Oh, things. I know, they are. Yes, you can see them on the skull too, very large. They 
pick up the smell of rotting carcasses and they circle in and swoop down and feed on oh. it. Wonderful. Well, hey, September 3rd, anything special going on for uh, Awareness Day for the I vultures? Um, we're just doing some demonstrations, but I'd encourage people if they're driving down the road and they see a, a turkey vulture feeding on a carcass to slow down and maybe switch to the other lane so they don't uh, accidentally hit them. Absolutely. They are important in our world. Thank you very much, Feller, for keeping things smelling good and <laughs> keep them clean. <laughs> I put my finger over there, but I know you would bite it. So, <laughs> Mike Demlong, Arizona Game and Fish, thanks so much for joining us today. Good luck on your new show. Yeah, thank you very much. Very much. Our friends, I have a turkey vulture for a friend and Mike. <laughs> <laughs> Don't go away, and we're gonna heat things up, so get ready. We got barbecue in the kitchen. We'll be right back. Hey, we have some hot friends with us today. These are the barbecue kings and queens. Mike and Lynn Jeffrey, come on over. Montana Hi, barbecue. You spell it kind of cute, bar dash b dash q. Anyway, but you you obviously do barbecue. We got all kinds of little cool things. But you're gonna start us off with the sweetness of dessert, Lynn. Yes. So look at this pie. Tell me about this. Well, I feel better if I had some chicken wings to wear, but I didn't bring them, oh. so I'll just have to show you the chicken strawberry wings, pie. Darn. <laughs> but what I'm going to have you do, Rout Lime, showing how to make the pie, is cut this up and get your little server. And I'm oh. going to let you pick out your own oh, garnish. Oh, nice. Okay, so I'm going to load my pie up here. Yes. This looks so good. How can I, like, this is going to kill me, no, because I have to talk. It's hard to eat strawberries while you're talking. Okay, so you don't just have barbecue. First. You have, like, desserts, obviously marvelous, marvelous desserts Yes, here. we made this for Mr. Uh, Don Laughlin in Laughlin, Nevada at the U.S. Barbecue Championships. Okay. Yes, get it. Here, you there. do it, man. You're magic. Really good. Okay. And we're going to show it falls apart. Oh, it's so beautiful. What kind of crust is this, by the way? Okay, so I'm going to show you how to make the crust, and you get to decorate oh, with now your we're choice make of one. strawberries and Oreo and oh, I'm whipped totally cream. loving this now. Okay. So what we do, we take some fresh Oreo cookies, and we take that how, how um, in the world? keep your husband in line instrument. <laughs> oh, my God, this is not keeping him in line. This would kill him. Mine's like wooden. Rolling. Okay, this is like, whoa. Way right? better than a Jack Daniels <laughs> bottle. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, we just munch them How up. How to make your favorite like Oreos that. even better. Can you imagine And that? then we put them in the pie. Are these your own recipes? In the like? pie dish. This has been in my family for years. Oh. I just modified the crust and some of the goodies. So and you leave you it a little see, bit crunchy, too. Yeah. Ah. And you can put some of this crunchy stuff on top of your whipped cream that you're going to dollop on oh, top. Oh, OK. Are we right ready for there. whipped cream yet? Yes. Oh, all right. This whipped is great. Whipped cream it. All right, ready? Da da. Okay, so no, I'm right here. I'm right here. <laughs> no, Sorry, the you can pick over from there. cookie crumbs okay. to or orange slice. This is how to make it fun because not only do you want it taste good, you want the judges to just look really good oh, too. Oh, right. Okay, so, you so can this is take a little orange. And who are the yeah. judges? The judges are us who are eating this. Look how beautiful <laughs> this is. So and a beautiful. Cookie and and a cookie a for good measure. And a mint on top. Oh my goodness. Okay, so that's just a just a sample, a small sample yes. of what Montana Barbecue does. Where are you guys, by the way? Um, we're at 2161 at Hillsdale Road, um, okay. over at the roundabout on Hi Highway 89 and Willow Lake Road. I know where that is. <laughs> yes, right. Yes, across the street from the lake. Go yeah. laking and come over. Okay, it so is. barbecue, what you got going here? Yes, okay, now for the custom-made um, kebabs. What you husband. got your name? This is All right, this is, Mike. Hey, this Mike. is what uh, barbecue is all about. People this who cook are always my a, friends, exactly. by the way. You know. And it's Labor Day <laughs> coming up, so <laughs> right. this is quick, easy, and anybody can do it. Ooh, uh, but it might be better if you go to Montana Barbecue. Yeah. You guys open for Labor Day? <laughs> no, we're going to be at uh, in Air, uh, Colorado. At, uh, in Colorado. At oh, okay, okay. Loon Festival. <laughs> but, but you start with a pork butt, uh, and, and that, as you see the fat cap here. You cut that off, and then you cut it up into Ooh, so chunks. So it's nice and lean. Yes. Okay. And oh, and you, you got the chunks. Cut it up for me. Okay. And you put it inside there. And okay. And then we add, add our marinade. Oh, this is a mar look at you're using Seven Up in that. Yes. Oh, I love this. This is the best part. This the is marinade. magic. Make Not, them the night ahead, you? and they're really good too. Okay, so when you say marinade, do you mean long marinade can work really well for this? Yes, like overnight or three days ahead. Oh, he's gonna go heavier yeah. on the sauces. And that was not enough, Lynn. Did you a see that? Of the right, homemade barbecue my, sauce. Okay, now here's your secret sauce, right? <laughs> yes. The homemade barbecue the sauce. Homemade. Is this what makes your stuff really magic? Yes, and she's won first place at Kansas City 
barbecue championship with it. And she nice, forgot to mention that Lynn. she's taken four state championships with, with, the, with pie. the pie. With the okay, pie. Okay, and that's why she said dessert. make it look good for, for the, the judges. judges. Yes, Lynn. Right. And this is the secret to it. You have to know how to sew. Ah, I it's can It's all in the wrist, Sandy. So I would have ah. you do this when you don't have gloves on. No, I shirt. know. I love it. You <laughs> offered that job to me. And Mike did. I said, no, no, no. I'll stick with the strawberries. Thank you very much. So after you marinate overnight, or uh -huh. you can put it on the sticks and marinate it in a pan overnight, then you're going to put it on a nice bed of even lit charcoal, no lighter uh -huh. fluid, and no chemicals, all natural And it needs charcoal. to be the charcoal. It needs to be hickory charcoal. Hickory flavored, anything like yes, that? Yes, you can use uh, hickory, uh, apple, uh, mesquite. Uh, whatever, oh, whatever anything you is. like. So show her what this. we pre-cooked on the charcoal this morning. Oh, yes, the, the magic there of television, go. we have amazing things. Any cheap charcoal. Look at this, it's so cool. It is kind of a weaving mm -hmm. process. Okay, all right, now you have really interesting names. What are these called? Well, uh, the pork wrapped in bacon that I just made is called Death by Swine. Death and by Swine. You do have a defibrillator. <laughs> <laughs> on set, right? Yeah, we're safe. I think. Okay, good. I think we're safe. If not, we can call our son. Okay. He's an EMT. Call the fire department because okay. this is hot stuff, you know? <laughs> Montana barbecue. Oh, look at the finished product. Those are so So these gorgeous. are the cooked, already marinated chicken, and we call those at the Irish Festival the drunk Irish mother clucker. I know you. I know Mike tried to Cluckers say it was af good. named after <laughs> you, and we said be very careful with those those names when you say these. Okay. Where'd you get these names? You have the wildest names. Okay, Death by Swine. I'm not going to try and say the clucker one. <laughs> okay. You have to say it five times fast. Yeah, mm -mm. <laughs> and son of an oinker. That, uh, son of an oinker. That, I, you we have to that. say it like you mean it. You gotta go, son of a son oinker. Of a, yeah. Okay. Well, an oinker. There, I almost did it. <laughs> then we're never mad at each other. We take our frustrations out on that. I love it. Okay, so there's pork, chicken, beef. beef. Okay, and and our beef oh, is Oh, our filet mignon. Wrapped in bourbon bacon. And this stuff will be ready. Uh, you can get Ooh. it at the Yavapai Fair coming up. Uh, September. The 8th through the 11th. Uh, we're gonna all right, so not this weekend, but like the next weekend it starts and you're going to be there, Montana barbecue stuff all Every the time. With these. Now also, there is another uh, special event that you guys are doing, Cords and... Uh, Cooks, Cooks, and, and Corks. Cooks and Corks. Um, okay. September 17th. And that is for, um, at Waters Garden, it's a, a benefit dinner for muscular dystrophy. And uh, Lynette Hoyt, uh, puts that on for the hospitals of northern right. Arizona. A victim of it. I mean, yes. it, it's amazing what you get involved in when, you know, you have something to do. Yes. But but that's open to the public. Hey, but I want to say, how'd you guys get into this? How long have you been doing barbecue? Uh, for about 15 years. 15 years. These guys know what they're doing. All right, Montana barbecue, mm -hmm. we have information on the screen. We have all this delicious food we are going to, like, snarf up when it's done. All right, I think I'm just going to call this a, a and son, to son of an oiker. And you want sweet or spicy? Oh, sweet or spicy? Sweet. 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 Okay. Sweet. 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 Hey, Just we're going to take a break. We're going to be right back. Hey, but I want to tell you about something really neat going on because we have Tim's Family Auto Group is Northern Arizona's only full-service auto dealership. It offers certified parts and service departments, a body shop and towing service. Tim's carries a huge selection of Toyotas, Scions, GMCs, Music, Hyundais, and Subarus. Did you get the Buick part? <laughs> anyway, stop by today and test drive the car, truck, or SUV that suits your lifestyle because Tim's friendly professional staff will help you find the perfect fit. That's right, Tim's has it all. Tim's family on the group. Today's show has been brought to you in part by Tim's Auto Group. You can count on us, serving Prescott since 1983. I can't believe it. Sandy and Friends, the very first episode is already over. But you, my friends out there, will be meeting new friends tomorrow. And here's some of the ones that we have. We have a wild survivalist on. We also have someone who can help you with smart scanning for health. Finally, marching for babies. Who doesn't want to help babies? And hold the phone. A new regular thanks to my wonderful guests and friends today. And we'll see you tomorrow. Sandy and friends right here. Now, back to my pie. Closed captioning is brought to you by Cliff Castle Casino Hotel, voted number one casino for 17 years in a row.